Welcome back to the last uh, session of the week one. Today's discussion is on employees training and organizational excellence. In this introductory lecture, we have discussed about the importance of training for the organization. We have discussed also on who are employees. We have discussed on the employer-employee relationship, the employment contract, moving beyond the employment contract, how like employees can be considered as human capital and why rather they are human capital because they have already invested in developing themselves and after entering the organization, organization also like tries to in, invest in them so that they are performing in a much better way towards the purpose of the organization. All these are done, these investments in whether we talk of human capital, training and development given to the employees. The purpose is to reach the organizational goal in a better way and excel in whatever we are doing. So the purpose of like this training and development is of, co of course focused towards the organizational excellence and also the personal excellence of the employees. So and when the personal excellence of the employees gets blended with the organizational excellence, the synergy develops and it fulfills the purpose of training and development. So in today's lecture session, we are going to cover, discuss on employees training and organizational excellence. Let us begin. So this part of the lecture session will be held on various issues of employees training and organizational excellence. So what is organizational excellence? It is a term which is used in company frequently to define how they seek to stand out by putting processes in place and to motivate employees to serve better to the customers. Organizational excellence continues the progress established by a foundation such as a total quality management where all level of employees of the organization are involved in its continuous development. The word continuous development is very, very important whenever we are talking of organizational excellence. Organizational excellence is defined as an ongoing effort. This word ongoing effort is very important. It is not a one-time activity but an ongoing effort to establish an internal framework of standards and processes which is intended to engage and motivate employees to deliver products and services that fulfill the requirements of the customers. Now, what is the, what are the aspects of organizational excellence? Excellence is a space when we talk which is between average and exceptional. It is the employee's abilities to exceed expectations and consistently deliver superior quality of products and services. There are four important aspects of excellence such as Quality means consistency, excellence means improvement, greatness means creativity, and excellence means going the extra mile. We'll try to describe this in a more elaborate way. Quality means consistency. Great philosopher like Aristotle once said, excellence is not an act, it's a habit. The employees who are repeatedly demonstrating the competency in all the work, they will gain credibility with their contacts. Excellence means improvement. For making an excellence, it is the organization who need to, 
who need to boost up spirit of excellence to make sure that new abilities contribute to any organization. Greatness means creativity. Creative people sometimes break new grounds to give rise to excellence. The creative efforts originally taken up to open the imaginations and interactions with people to make them attract towards organizations of excellence. Now, excellence means going the extra miles. Excellent people routinely do more than asked. They react positively to excellence with loyalty and they reward excellent leaders with support. We have an organizational excellence framework where we find like the there is an organizational profile in which there is an environment relationship and challenges. This environment is both internal and external to the organization and relationship and challenges are both internal within the stakeholders who are present within the organization and also who are present outside the boundaries of the organization also. So what we find over here like you can see like it is a both sided arrow which is given meaning like each of them influence each other. So the leadership defines the strategic planning and has a customer focus which then leads to like again measurement and analysis of knowledge management which is important. So whenever we are strategically planning and we are having a customer focus, we need to understand who, what is the knowledge base of our employees, what are their strengths and weaknesses, what are their competencies, where, like how, how much of the human capital, to what extent do we have so that like we can answer to the customer focus we can to the demands of the customer and to the and in that way we can go for the strategic planning this helps us to this measurement analysis and knowledge management this homework this background work helps to understand what is the gap which uh, how, which is there between what is expected in terms of strategic planning and customer focus and what we really have in terms of the intellectual base, the competency base that we have and the resources that we have. That leads to the workforce focus where we get to see who are our present employees, what is the talent that we have, like what are the present skill set of the employees and how they can be trained to close the gap between what is expected and what we have in uh, like with our inventory now, skill inventory now, what is the knowledge base, what is the competency and that will help to define the different processes undertaken for it which, which is not only the training and development, training and development is one of the uh, sub functions of course which is related with all other HF functions because we need to understand whether training and development is the answer or recruitment is the answer or like maybe shifting employees from one department to the other is the answer. So we have to take a decision. It is a human uh, decision regarding the workforce that we need to take and we have to manage the processes accordingly. We have to like channelize our resources accordingly. So the fo workforce focus and will lead to the process management and ultimately that will lead to a result which is again going to, to uh, we are going, going to measure it and, and find like, uh, like whether it is the result as per the expectations and this result will again have an effect on the organizational profile in terms of like if you're going by the training and development it is of course going to shift bring a shift in the like nature of em employees we have and it, it it is it is going to bring in more knowledgeable employees and more competent employees who are better able to answer to the challenges of the environment and this whole process really uh, starts with a uh, 
leadership. It's leadership which is transformational in nature, leadership which is uh, like, uh, which is very agile in nature, who, who understands the importance of uh, the workforce, who understands the importance of employees towards the organization, leadership which is also servant leadership, who, who wants to nurture the employees so that they can contribute better towards the purpose of the organization. These kind of leadership are very important uh, for uh, uh, developing the employees and making the sh a path goal kind of leadership. So all these leadership styles, uh, empowering leadership needs to be blended in the leadership styles that we are having, which is going to focus on the strategic planning with its focus on customer and how to see like how to close the gap between uh, the present workforce and the expected workforce and their co contribution towards the organization and how to plan for the like uh, connect different HR functions and processes with each other so that they can contribute towards the expected uh, deliverables as uh, understood from the uh, like demands of the environmental challenges and that again gives a feedback. So this together will lead to an organization's excellence, an organization who is able to give a timely response, expected response to the demands of the environment and survive. So in that case, this measurement, analysis, knowledge management, focus on worker, process management, strategic planning, customer focus, all these are very important interlinked points with each other. As per the Malcolm Bridge Excellence Framework, the attributes of organizational intake excellence include like strategic leadership as if already discussed, strategic planning, customer and market focus, measurement analysis and knowledge management, workforce or human resources, process management and business results. The American Society for Quality has pointed out that there should be there should have been deliberate management and improvement in the six key areas for successful organizational excellence as noted below information sharing understanding the information the metrics of information measures and decision support the structure of the organization in terms of roles responsibilities and accountabilities of each functional area people the total human capital within the organization rewards in terms of compensations and incentives, learning systems which is knowledge and training and work processes which are interaction and linkage of workflows. So it's very important like the information flows and it helps in taking the decision. There's a supporting structure which facilitates the interaction which helps which tells the roles and responsibilities and accountabilities of the people who are like present in that role the nature of the human capital people their uh, like competencies their inner strength their skill sets knowledge attitudes everything matters then what are the rewards for reaching a particular goal how people learn the knowledge and training is very important and the how each of the work processes are linked with each other. So whether like if we want certain improvement, whether training and we have time constraints also, so whether training could be the answer or we need to focus on other processes of HR, other functional areas. So that is a decision it is a, which needs to be taken for organizational excellence and that is possible only when there is a proper linkage and interaction of the different workflows. Now how employee training and organizational excellence are uh, related to each other? 
So well-trained employees help the organization increasing productivity and yielding profit. Their, their high rate of employees retention and customer satisfaction for investment in employee training. Effective training saves labor by reducing time spent on problem solving and saves money in the long run by producing a better workforce. What is the importance of training and development in organizational excellence is the training and career development they are very vital in any company or organization that which whose aim is to progress. This includes decision making, thinking creatively and managing people. So these are the main features of organizational excellence also. The training and development here plays a very important part because it helps in addressing employee weaknesses as I was discussing in the organization excellence model. Your measurement analysis and knowledge management and again simultaneous focus on the workforce uh, which is present there in the organization, the inventory of skill set that you're having or the knowledge base that you're having helps to understand where the employees need to develop so that they can come up to that level that is expected to contribute towards the expected deliverables. So training and development is important because it helps to address employee weaknesses. It helps in improvement of worker performance, consistency in duty performance, ensuring worker satisfaction. Increased productivity, of course, it is that is you can take like this as a, a sub part. It, if all these things are done, obviously, it is going to like add to increasing productivity, improved quality of service and products, reduced cost, and reduction in supervision. Because if the employees become self developed, if they become motivated, if they become engaged because they love doing certain things because they have been given the strength to do it they are like they have got the self confidence that they can do it because they know they know about it and they can do it so it reduces the uh, more supervision is not required because they become uh, like self motivated to perform because they know like they have the capability to perform so that it reduces in reduction in supervision also. So what is the effect of employees training on employees per, on individual performance is that training and development is a continuous process for employees irrespective of whether they are old or newly appointed it is very um, important aspect like the difference that I was telling like when I was discussing on employee employment contracts so in contracts when you sign the contract form maybe it is discussed about your orientation training and maybe the bond amount that you get have to uh, give back if you are just leaving the organization after the orientation training happens but it's somewhere the employment contract remains uh, like not so explicit about like what are the different kinds of training and career development opportunities that you have throughout your lifespan in the organization. So that is that definitely comes in whenever we are talking of human employees as human capital because in that continuous learning, continuous training, development, improvement becomes a very integral part of the high performance system and where we are talking of human capital uh, like development uh, and management because it is a continuous process which is there and which is given to all employees irrespective of whether you are an old employee have been there in the organization for some time or or you are a newly appointed person so the and it it is a continuous process which all employees 
uh, like need to go through and that organization gives you a facilitating mechanism for it. And it is also an effort which needs to be taken by the employees also because it is a value addition to themselves and to the organization both. So how does it help the employee's performance? Is it increases productivity and efficiency? It improves on the quality and the quantity of work output that you get. Boost employees' morale and organizational climate. Implement new or changed policies or regulations. Ensure the survival and the growth of the organization. These are very vital points which are important from the perspective of the in individual's performance and contribution towards organizational excellence. It also helps to develop new skills, knowledge, understanding and attitudes which provides for succession plan and ensure continuity of leadership. So it helps you, the employees in moving ahead in the career path also. It prevents skill obsolescence and cope with the new technological advancement. Use correctly the new tools, machines, processes, methods or modification thereof. And it reduces like waste, accidents, turnover, lateness, absenteeism and other overhead costs. So what are the effect of employees training on organizational performance? So there are some important aspects of uh, employees training on organizational performance like first of course it generates employee satisfaction and self-esteem. It meets up the expectations and needs of the employees. It reduces turnover costs. It increases productivity, improves the quality of work and it enhances the knowledge, skill, understanding and attitude. And it brings about the use of new tools and machines, help employees to adapt and accept the new technology and become experts in the use of new machines and techniques. So these are very important aspects if we talk of organizational performance, so adapting to the new technology. It reduces waste, accidents, turnover, lightness, absenteeism and other overhead costs. It also eliminates the obsolescence in skills, technologies, methods, products, capital management, enhances the implementation of new policies and regulations, and prepares the people for achievement, improves manpower development, and ensures the survival and growth of the organization. If you have seen, like there are certain overlap in points whenever we are discussing about how employees training and helps in individual performance and how employees training help in organizational performance. So there have been certain, if you have noticed it very carefully, some overlap of points between the, these two factors, which means like if the training is given to the employee as per the need of the organization, the need of the develop department and of course the need of the employees so which is a very important aspect of training need analysis where we match the need of the employees for certain developing certain skill sets and competencies with the need of the organization where they require certain skills to develop certain competencies to develop. So if these two things are matched properly and the training is given to an employee in that area. So what we find it helps in the employees to grow also by improving certain of their performance level, certain of their skill sets, uh, competencies, attitudes, uh, way of adjusting to the situations in the organization, accepting the policies, contributing to the policy development and adapting to new technologies. So these re reduction in waste, uh, improving, contributing to the quality uh, management. So these improves the employees, the person as a, as a, an, a more become more asset to the organization, helps that employee to improve, move ahead in their career path also. And this simultaneously also leads to the 
organizational performance and development and because these are the points of overlap where you find the individual performance and organizational performance these are the linking pins and if these are focused on along with the proper feedback and hand holding support from the leadership and a facilitating environment and given by the organization and of course a zeal of the and person also to learn certain new things so it is not only that the organization is providing certain opportunities to develop the employees also needs to be equally interested enough to uh, to uh, take that scope of development and nurture and nourish oneself so if all these things come together then the uh, training really has a immense impact not only on employees individuals performance and development but also on organizations performance and development because these all these individual performance will collectively enrich the group performance and the group performance will be focused again towards the organization's performance and help the organization to achieve its target and excel in the uh, deliverables that are expected by the customers and the environment and become like more uh, sustainable in the mind of the customers and in the and in the complexities of the environment that it is functioning and with respect to its competitors also so in that perspective training and development is very very important for organizational excellence so in this introductory lecture sessions uh, of week 1 we have tried to focus on again what is training what what are the importance of training uh, who are the employees what is the relationship of the employer employees contract how we can see move beyond beyond the basic contract towards considering human being as human capital and when we have a focus on human capital how the training and develop uh, training and development and other learning opportunities become very ingrained essential parts of the organization to help the organization to become a high performance work system and uh, work organization and uh, develop systems which are like suited to the purpose of the organization and uh, like reach the excellence and these organizational excellence is not like at the cost of the employees excellence but also the employees excellence get blended with the purpose of the organization's excellence and both of them perform together both of them uh, reach the goal of excellence together and that's how like it is a very like there is a synergy there is a win-win situation and training and development helps both the employees and the organization to grow together in the second week's lecture we are going to focus on the strategic training and development and the lecture series will be focusing on how to because we are focusing on training and development for the purpose of organizational excellence and human excellence of course which are present there within the organization so it is not like we are focusing on training for personal excellence and we're not considering the organizational purpose or we are focusing only on the organizational purpose and we're not looking into the human aspects no it's not that training and development helps to bring a balance between both these things a synergy between both these things and strategic planning for training and development strategic training and development is the way which helps to bring this balance in the second week's lecture we are going to focus on strategic training and development these are the references used for preparing this uh, lecture topic and these are the conclusion about the session is that we get a clear picture of the organizational excellence and various aspects of excellence 
uh, what are the key areas of organizational excellence and how training and development which helps to affect on the individual performance and organizational performance. And till then, thank you and bye-bye.